within the city of Jerusalem, the highest position of political authority is the office of high priest of Jerusalem. If you're interested in what the high priest is, what the jobs and roles and duty of the high priest is, you can go back and listen to one of my previous episodes. The first episode in the series, we spent quite a bit of time discussing the priesthood, high priest, normal priest, what's the difference, what do they do? But the high priest, it's the head of the council, the Sanhedrin, which is responsible for the political decisions within the city and within the immediate countryside of the city of Jerusalem. And it's a city. It is not a kingdom. They don't have a lot of lands that they control. It is just a city that has been part of empires for basically hundreds and hundreds of years. This position, this high priesthood position, of course, because it's the most powerful position within the city, it is obviously something that everybody who has ambition aspires to achieve. But the high priesthood isn't something that anybody can achieve. It's not even something that anybody who's of noble birth can achieve. If you are not familiar with kind of Jewish high priests and and how that role works, it is basically a hereditary position that can only be appointed from one of two families, mostly from the family of Aaron, who is the inheritor of uh, Moses as they leave the desert. So the family of Aaron, which is a huge family, so there's a lot of potential people who could become high priest within this family. These are the people who traditionally hold the role hereditarily of becoming the high priest. And there are lots and lots of people who are, you know, of Jewish descent that would see this as this is set in stone. This, this is what it's always been. This is what it has been since basically the start of our history, since we've left the exodus behind us in Egypt and come to our new land. It has only been the family of Aaron who is the high priest. Now, this isn't necessarily something that's set in stone. This is not something that other Jewish people would believe. And so the position of high priest, which is traditionally this hereditary position of which only people who are from the lineage of Aaron can become. Well, some of these people are willing to bribe Antiochus to make them high priest. And Antiochus, as far as we know, doesn't really understand that Only people from the family of Aaron can be high priest, and he probably doesn't even care. So somebody throws some bribes his way, make me high priest. You know, to Antiochus, like I said, the high priest, it's the highest political authority. Sure, there's a religious element to being high priest, but having your own guy who owes you favors being the one who's running the city might go a long way to helping sort out this collecting taxes problem that you have. So yeah, somebody with a lot of money throws a bribe his way, will appoint a new high priest, and while that's shocking in its own right, the person he appoints is still from the family of Aaron, so that's not, you know, so crazy. Antiochus sees this more as like a governor position. Yeah, you're, you're, you're governor now. Now this is where things start going really off the rails here. And the exact order of operations here is not clear. But this is one of the main ignition points for what will become the rebellion. And... Antiochus's um, 
appointment of Jason, who's Greek. You know, that that's a Greek name. And I say he's Greek. He's not Greek. He is undoubtedly a native of Jerusalem. But he obviously has a Greek name. Jason, who becomes high priest, tries to abolish the hereditary theocracy that's been there and try to convert Jerusalem into a Greek polis. And if you're wondering, what the heck is a polis? What does that mean? You know, you're familiar with the concept of democracy. But in the Greek world, a polis would be more of what we would think of as an oligarchy. It would be, you know, groups of the elite of the elite, the rich people. Those would be the ones who would get together and decide who should run the world. They would kind of group, group, pardon me, jointly make decisions. So this is what Jason is accused of doing. And then you can see that being a bonus to Antiochus is, you know, the, if, if all this religious people are, are causing these problems, let, let's just abolish this high priesthood thing. And I don't have to do that. Somebody who's a high priest can abolish that. And then that's something, a message coming from internal to the community might be more well received. But again, Antiochus is bribed yet again to have somebody else become high priest. This is a guy by the name of Menelaus. Menelaus, it's also another Greek name. But Menelaus is not from this high priesthood family of Aaron. And this is a problem. This actually triggers riots within the city and probably within the countryside. 